Stand by for status. Airman, go. ECS, go. Sequence, go. Electrical, go. ASCS, go. RCS, go. Tom, go. TM, go. CO, go. Flight, go. Tony, I'm go. CO, I have your ready light. Roger. Aramed verify. Ready light. Aramed, uh, booster interlock to go. Go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Roger, have a lift off and the clock is operating. Sigma seven, phase seven on the way. Standing by to start the backup clock. Roger. Three, two, one, mark. Roger, and the backup clock is running. Roger, what's good here, Dolores? Roger, feels good, buddy. Great start. 30 seconds and fuel is go. Oxygen is go. Cabin pressure on the top peg altimeter is working. Hey, Roger, you're looking beautiful. What an afterburner. That's the beauty of your clock doing thing. This is a new and strange environment at first. This suddenly finding yourself in orbit. And want to take a few seconds time to uh, think about this and, uh, and see just what you're doing up here. It takes you a few minutes to really settle down. Uh, the added distraction is that you, there is the Earth uh, in view out of the window. It is a tremendous distraction. You want to glue your eyes on the window and watch every little detail of everything that's going on there. But the many hours of training in the simulators that we have seem to take over and you get right back on the flight plan and follow them pretty closely there and do the functions that you have planned on doing at the proper time. I'm not too much of a preacher, but while on the flight on the 17th orbit, I felt so inclined to put a small prayer onto the tape recorder of the spacecraft. It was over the middle of the Indian Ocean in the middle of the night. Things had been going so beautifully. Everything had been working correctly. And it was an ideal flight. I've been encouraged to read a little transcript of this prayer as an ending. I would like to take this time to say a little prayer for all the people, including myself, involved in this launch operation. Father, thank you especially for letting me fly this flight. Thank you for the privilege of being able to be in this possession, to be in this wondrous place, seeing all these many startling, wonderful things that you have created. Help guide and direct all of us that we may shape our lives to be much better Christians trying to help one another and to work with one another rather than fighting and bickering. Help us to complete this mission successfully. Help us in our future space endeavors that we may show the world that a democracy really can compete and still are able to do things in a big way and are able to do research, development, and conduct many scientific and technical programs. Be with all our families. Give them guidance and encouragement, and let them know that everything will be okay. We ask in our name. Amen. Thank you. Each flight, each man had observations to make that we could never have forecast, or he saw things that no one knew for sure that he would be able to see or wouldn't be able to see, or things that were completely unexpected. And these have contributed tremendously to the advancement of manned space flight. In fact, to the advancement of science as a whole. We feel, as a pilot group, that pilots are an integral part of space flight. I think that Mercury has shown that man is adaptable to this new and strange environment, and he can contribute immeasurably to the reliability and completion of space flights. The pilot has successfully completed three out of four orbital flights that an automatic system would not have. We have had 100% success on our manned flights. I think that we can hold Mercury up and say that it has been a real good example 
of a program that is run surprisingly close to its schedule.